Hi and welcome back to my devlog series. This is devlog 2 for my FPS game. If you haven't already, be sure to check devlog 1 out. Okay, so last episode we did a pretty functional game. We could move, shoot and even had enemies. For this devlog, I just wanted to enhance what we already have and also add a melee weapon. Almost all FPS games have some sort of melee weapon to distinguish the game and the player and make the game feel more unique. I started off by thinking about ideas for the melee weapon. Well, I'm not really creative, so I started off by modeling a sword in Blender. And yes, the reference picture is a toy sword. So I added the sword into our project and started working on the animations. After a while I had this. I also added some trails to make the sword animation look more dynamic. And this is how it looks. Well, it's plain and boring and it's definitely not unique. So I thought about a great idea of adding a grapple gun to a sword, totally not copying the idea from Danny. After setting her up, I had this. It looks pretty cool but isn't unique and I'm not being creative enough and just copying Danny. So I scratched the idea and thought about a new idea I could use for a melee weapon. I ended up creating a knife. Yes, this is a very unique idea and is definitely not found in every FPS game. But this isn't just an ordinary knife, it's a boomerang knife thing. So the idea is to have a simple working knife that we can slice enemy heads and also throw the weapon and it will return back to us. After writing a simple script, this is how it looked like. After tweaking the script a bit, I had it working the way I wanted it to. It looks pretty cool, so I got to work on the animations. And after setting them up, this happened. Yeah, I guess the boomerang just didn't like the new animations. I tried everything I could think of to fix the problem, but it wouldn't fix. I tried recreating the animations, turning off the animator when the boomerang is on, but nothing seemed to work. After a few days, I thought about fixing different things and coming back to this later. I wanted to redo the entire movement script as it was laggy. The rigid body just didn't fit my game as it was laggy and had too many restrictions as it was very complicated. Well, so I removed the rigid body and added a character and controller as it was smooth, didn't have as many restrictions and was less complicated than the rigid body. But due to this change, we lost our grapple gun. A moment of silence for our grapple gun. I really enjoyed the grapple gun and want to make it somehow work with the character controller. But for now, the grapple gun is gone. I started setting the character controller up and after writing some code, we could move, jump, crouch and slide. The sliding in my game is very different from any games as games like Carlson use it to gain momentum while in my game it's just another move and is not really used for gaining momentum or speed. We just slide for a while and then automatically stand up. After setting all of the easy stuff up, I got to work on the more complicated stuff like vaulting. After writing a lot of script, I had it working. I also wanted to add wall running as it is a fan favorite. I don't want the game to feature wall running prominently as I want the game to feel realistic. So after a few google searches and a few hours of smashing my keyboard, I had it working. I also added a head tilt to make it look better. I think this is good for now but we'll probably work more on it later. I also want to redo the entire shooting script as the current shooting script just doesn't feel realistic at all. So I got to work on a projectile script and after a while I had this. I added a trail to make it look more dynamic and this is how it looked in the end. It definitely looks better but it just doesn't fit my game at all. So I scrapped it and started researching about different methods I could use. That's when I found out about tracers. So what tracers basically do is play a particle effect when you shoot, making it look like a bullet. A lot of games including CSGO and Call of Duty use this method. So I started off by making a particle effect and after a while I had this. It looks too realistic for my game but it works for now. After fixing all of that, I got to work on the knife again. And after a lot of shots in the dark, I had it working the way I wanted it to. I really enjoyed the weapon and I feel that it fits the game perfectly. Well, we cannot pick up or drop our guns, so I got to work on a pick up and drop system. After finishing the script, I realized that's not what I wanted. I only want the people to replace the gun and not drop. So I started modifying the script. What we basically do is shoot a raycast. If the raycast hits a gun and we're already holding a gun, it will drop the gun we already have and pick up the new weapon. After some time, I had it working. Looks well for now. We'll probably add some shaders to the dropped weapons to make it stand out more. Well, I was done with all my work and had some time left, so I started working on something I had on my mind for some time. Power-ups. So the idea is to have a cube that, when we collide with, destroys itself and gives us some powers. It was pretty basic to implement, and after a while I had this. For this example, I used it to increase our speed, but this could be used for anything. Double jump, higher jumping, more health, explosive bullets, and so much more. I'll probably add like a particle to indicate that you picked up a power-up. 
I really enjoyed this idea and could be used for many cool map designs. Well, that will be the end of this devlog. There is still a lot of work to do and a lot of bugs to fix, but that'll be for the next part of the devlogs. I thought about working on an inventory system this week, but I will be remodeling all my guns next week and it'll probably be a waste of time if I create icons this week and again next week. So we'll probably do that next week. Okay, I'm out. Peace.